Dan Gastu here. Um, in this video, we just look at replacing the power head onto the onto the motor. Um, now, um, this is actually my second attempt at filming this intro because when I went to uh, edit the film, I noticed I had quite a bit of grease on the lens for the first part of the film. Uh, made the whole thing look a bit like a dream sequence from an 80s sitcom or something. So, um, but it's actually not such a problem as it turns out because that. Um, that particular section ended with me putting the power head back on but one of the bolts just spinning. Uh, and it turned out that, that particular head bolt had previously been repaired with a helicoil um, which I could just spin off the bolt so the whole thing came out so it meant fixing it and that's what we do in this video as well so you'll see that later on. Uh, one thing I did want to say though before we get into it is um, because when I do the, um, the bolts for a second time I don't go through the talking um, specs and torque specs for them as much um, as I did the first time, so I'll just go through them again quickly. Um, so the patterns are actually labelled on the the head itself, which is fantastic. Um, and as always, when we're tightening them, you kind of start as a spiral pattern, the centre bolts, and you sort of move out to the outer bolts. Um, so they're labelled. So when you're tightening it, you just do bolt one through bolt ten, and when you're taking it off, you do bolt ten through bolt one. Uh, but with the um, cylinder head bolts, it's got two sets of bolts: some nine mil and some six mil. Um, and they're torqued in two phases. So the um, the first phase for the um, nine mil is 23 newton meters, and the first phase for the six mil is six newton meters. And then they're practically just both doubled. So the second phase for the nine is 47 newton meters, and the second phase for the six mil bolts is 12 newton meters. So that's just something that I did go through in that first bit of video that I didn't keep in the end. Um, but it's a pretty straightforward process. Anyway, we'll get into it, enough talking. Um, so we actually just picked this video up um, when I've returned from the shops to buy a new bolt to replace the one that was just spinning. All right, hope you enjoy. So, take two. Let's try again, hey? Uh, so these dowel pins are actually in the head at the moment. I will grab some pliers and transfer them. To the uh, cylinder body now. Um, they were here and here. So I've given the um, uh, both the cylinder head surface and the um, engine block another clean because obviously I had bits of debris and oil on them since we started doing this work again. Just giving the uh, gasket a bit of a wipe. So, uh, one thing I do have to check, and that is whether this bolt, my new bolt, is going to fit through the gasket as well. It's not. So, I'm going to have to drill this gasket as well. So, ready to go again. Clean and good. Let's drop all these bolts in again. These are all the original 9mm bolts. Uh, sorry, let's. Uh, Re-oil these ones. Okay, so I'm going to go around now and talk these up again in the um, same pattern we did before, starting at uh, the centre in um, bolt one, and uh, so 23 newton meters again. I won't um, won't film this whole process a second time, but hopefully it'll be more successful. Um, and then I'll uh, get back to you when uh, we've got a result. All right, so. Um, 
Next thing to come out of our sort of bag of tricks of spare parts is a new gasket o-ringy type style um, for the uh, cylinder head cover. Um, so I'm just going to open this up and uh, fit this into the uh, cover first and then we'll lay that down and um, get this on. Um, this is going to be pretty fiddly. So I think I might just use a bit of grease to kind of anchor it in. So now we've got this uh, cover on. Just going to quickly run these down. There's no um, no torque settings for this uh, cover bolts. There's no real pressure inside here. Um, just stopping the oil leaking out, really. It is the same uh, tightening pattern though, so I'm just doing these very loosely. And then once we're done. going to start talking them in this sort of center out spiral pattern. Okay, so now we've got this head on, I'm just going to uh, push on and um, and complete the uh, installation of the driven sprocket for the camshaft and the timing belt. That way you've sort of resynchronized the crankshaft and the um, camshaft and we're back in action. So. There's a dowel here, this dowel actually does come out, this one's pretty stuck, I haven't removed it, but this does come out, so just be careful of that. Um, and on the bottom of this uh, driven sprocket for the camshaft, there's just a hole that goes in. So we'll just pop that down, and that'll lock it in position. Uh, and then it's pretty straightforward after that, there's just a um, washer and a uh, single bolt. So once again, just going to put a little bit of oil on it. So what I need to do here as well is just align this uh, number one cylinder mark with the top dead centre. So when this is here, cylinder one's at top dead centre. And we've got the same here with the crankshaft when this uh, empty smaller hole is level with this um, triangle mark here. So they're pretty good. Uh, what I am going to do is just grab a shifter, I think. I'll be back in a second. Okay, won't grab a shifter, I'm just going to grab a. This is a 30mm socket for the nut at the top here. It's actually a little bit past top dead centre, so I'm actually just going to go round again. Oops, went past again. Ooh. This is a little bit stiff, which kind of worries me. Alright, so now we've got these two marks, or these four marks, two pairs of marks lined up. We know we're all good in position. So I'm just going to go grab the timing belt. So this time belt looks in excellent condition, so I'm not worried about putting this one back on. I get the impression it was replaced not that long ago. And so do the sprockets. Now the next thing we need to do is install this tensioner to take the slack out of it. What I will do is just bring that slack round to the side of the belt where the tensioner goes. Now, tensioner has a few parts. First of it's a spring, so we just have to get this spring in. It sits on this uh, this little uh, protrusion, I don't know what you call it, um, here. And there's another one here with a groove in it, which is where this long arm sits in. And then the next thing we want to do is take this 
the tensioner wheel that the belt runs along and there's a little hook here and we have to hook the spring and that's what pulls the tensioner in towards the belt. Okay, hang on, I'm going to have to turn this around to install it and then I'll spin it back to you. Okay, so we've got a couple of uh, fasteners for this. Uh, this particular fastener with the sleeve here goes at the end closest to the crankshaft. And that's the one that the tensioner pivots on. And another one here looks to be about an eight mil fastener. Goes at this end. This is the one that locks the, um, the tensioner in place. So what it means is it can come out, just slip the belt over it. Probably should have had this in place before I did that, never mind. So this is the arrangement we've now got. Where the belt comes round, it's this side of the tensioner. This tensioner has a spring and the spring's pushing the tensioner this way, it's pivoting on, on this bolt and um, it's locked by this one. So the manual now says, uh, once it's in place, tension it by turning it at least two full revolutions. So I'll just hold this in place, let it spin a few times. I'm going to bring it back round did center cylinder one. Not that we, uh, okay, so what we've got here is I'm top dead cylinder one here, but I'm at least one tooth out here. So I'm going to have to do this again. Um, no biggie. Just got this tensioner all the way back, which means I can get this off pretty easily. Now, what I need to do is I'm going to leave that uh, oh, overkill. Uh, I'm going to leave the uh, crankshaft on top dead centre there, and then just tweak the camshaft back on the top dead centre here. And we'll see. Sorry, what I'll do because this one's got the lip. I'll get it on here first. Uh, which way are we going to go? tensioner out. Okay, so I'm going to give it a couple of rotations again and see whether it's aligned properly. So, yeah, that's heaps better. So, top dead centre on the crankshaft, top dead centre on the camshaft. That's what we want. That's really important. So, the smaller bolt that, it, that the tensioner um, pivots on down low is uh, 8 newton meters. Let's just find 8 on this. I think that's 8, it's a little bit odd, but anyway. I uh, might just put a uh, extension on this to get it past the uh, belt. Alright, so not much. 8 new meters, not much at all. Um, now, the locking one, quite understandably, needs more. So it is 25 newton meters. So I'm going to use the larger uh, torque wrench for that. And so it's 25 newton meters or uh, 18 foot pounds. So 
So let's go 18 because it's an easier scale to work with. Okay, there we go. Just double check that's about right. Yep. Okay, we're done. So head on, torqued up, towing belt on, aligned, tension is on. So thanks for watching. I, uh, I hope you um, enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed doing it because it's nice to see this motor going back together instead of coming apart <laughs> further and further and further. So um, next step is going to be for me to put um, start pulling some of the ancillary stuff back on. Um, I'll put this uh, exhaust cover back on. There's no great deal there. Um, then start putting the starter motor, the ignition coils, all those things we pulled off before we removed the head on. Um, I'll do that while the motor's still able to sit quite flat, and then the final thing we'll do later is uh, inspect and reinstall the oil pump because that'll stop the motor sitting nicely on the bench, so we'll do that last. Okay, so yeah, once again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.